Ladies and gentlemen, how are we doing this morning? I've well, seen a stream about this game. Um, thank you, and thank you for appreciate fishing. I used to play it. I played it for about two months, about half a year ago. Fishing Planet is basically the most realistic fishing simulator there has been made yet. Um, with lines, with hooks and floats, with baits. With baits you put on a jig head. To, of course, your standard lures, and there is more stuff that goes in here. And in here we include speed boats and kayak. You know, you for rods example, I mean, look at the different specific data. It is like looking on a fishing website. <laughs> like the most advanced fishing website. This is how you get all your gear. Um, mainly, you know, your it's all at the top, really. You can read it. Rod, reels, lines, tools, equipment, tackle, lures, baits, boats, licenses. Um, I'll explain the licenses first. People can get a little bit confused with uh, this. Let's just pick Texas because that's a basic one, right? So, unlimited cost coins. Coins are actually pretty easy to gather, so you don't need to worry about being this a pay-to-play because it really isn't. Licenses cost money to fish for certain days. And I know that kind of sounds pretty stupid, but you get money per fish. Some fish can be worth well over 100, some are worth two, 300, some are worth uh, 11. And that's just the thing you've got to balance out if you're getting these passes. Um, the biggest and most important tool apart from a rod that I recommend is that you go ahead and you get yourselves um, I don't know why I keep skipping over that the first time is one of these keep nets as you see I've, I have owned three of them this one total weight it carries four pounds of fish this one which I got near the start with my bonus coins carries 31 pounds and this crappy one I was awarded covers uh, 15 pounds. I say that's crappy, but if you're a beginner, 15 pounds is a, a half decent haul of fish. Um, I think my goal today is probably to get the 55 pound weight net because when I fish on a day, I tend to catch in bulk because not to toot my own horn, but I'm I'm I am I'm okay at this game, you know, because of reasons I'm about to explain. One particular reason that uh, makes everyone constantly annoyed at fishing games and that's when everyone drops the hook in the water they expect the dumbass fish to come and get it what people don't realize is that the fish if they're on the other side of the lake they're not just going to swim over out of idle curiosity you have to pick your spots and unfortunately you know it's not like there's anything that can help you with that there's some recommendations, like some fish will say to hang near weeds, some hang near edges, some prefer deep water, some prefer feeding on the bottom, some are surface feeders. They do give you that detail, but you still have to make the judgment on your own, depending where you go. We're going to start off with the Lone Star Lake here, most basic. Level zero, you get it as soon as you come. As soon as you complete two fish challenges, you can pretty much afford an unlimited pass here, so you can fish here as long as you like, and you don't have to worry about paying for a license. The other thing, by the way, just um, just to uh, clarify, the higher you go, the more expensive traveling to lakes gets, and I'm talking it can cost up to what I currently have in my balance of 5,000 and that's because at that point they they would, you know not expect you, but they would they would hope you would know what you're doing by then um, and it's a very fine line, it's a very fine balance um, but I think if you're a lot like me and you find yourself a good fan of building gear for having a sturdy um for having sturdy gear for when you do want to go catch big fish, you will always find yourself revisiting here using basic tricks to get money. If you're starting level, you can use any bait here, and I might go through float fishing in a little bit. 
because to be honest what I'm about to do now is the most important type of fishing at the start of the game and that is spin fishing. Float fishing, you watch the float, you wait for it to go down. That's how you'll get introduced. But let me tell you, as soon as your um, tutorial is done, switch to a spinning rod and get spinning. Some rods you'll be able to spin on and uh, cast floats on. I'm pretty sure that's the rod I'm currently using. Um, this isn't the most basic that you will get equipped with. I'm pretty sure this is a level 5 rod, level 6 rod, so it's still fairly easy to powerful um, for the fish in here. And what I mean by that is if you go in with equipment too heavy, you won't necessarily feel the bite of a fish and you could just lose it and you won't even know it's happened. Um, again, you've just got to judge your weight of the your gear the durability of you, you've just got to you've got to work it out for yourself it's all things i could go through but it is very technical and it's something you've got to pick up on by yourself Th just to confirm though even though i said it's technical this is not a complicated game it is just like anything else once you get used to it it's easy peasy because common sense kicks in. If you want smaller fish, you're going to use a smaller rod and you're going to use lighter line. If you want bigger fish, you're going to use a bigger rod, you're going to use heavier line. It's it's simple. So we're going to go into uh, this random room here, give some people, some appreciated fishermen, some air time here. <laughs> so, we are going to start off cheap and I'm going to explain something that might make you freak out in the um, in the inventory beforehand but let me assure you it will not freak you out too much okay so what I am currently fishing with is one of these a casting spool Okay, I only have eight of them left, inc not including the one I have attached. When you buy them, you will only get ten. And by this point, you would have been introduced to buying bait, which you're used to, which will probably come in twenty fives or fifties, if I'm not mistaken. So please do not freak out about only being given ten spools. It's not like you lose one per cast. They're reusable over and over and over again, unless you get it stuck in a snag or if you have your line snapped. And personally, as you can see, the casting spools I bought at a very, very low level, I believe. Um, let me just double check what uh, level that one is at. Does that count as a spoon? I think it would count as a spoon. Yeah, it does. So here you go. Level 3. Level 3, 150 quid. These spoons are cheaper, they're alright, but these are good. So we'll say 150 good, we'll say dollars, so it's a bit more universal. We'll say 150 dollars for this casting spool. It's only a sixth of an ounce. It is very small, but um, the higher levels you will get heavier ones for the bigger fish. So, But for this, um, there's not really any big fish in here. Um, so we won't need anything too heavy. This stuff isn't just nonsense that the game likes to have. This is very important stuff. This chart that you can see with the peaks and the drops right on the left, those charts, right, those charts during the day show you the fish activity. And as we can see, from 7 a.m. to 10, uh, 7 p.m., it has a huge dip in the middle of the day and then comes back up in the evening goes dramatically down again in the evening and then about 5 a.m. yeah it's back up to the top and then it will drop back down again in the morning but we're only going to be spending the day here um, so I will be leaving just before the big spike so I might miss out on some good fish because there's some fish here as I'm about to show you on this list that are a lot harder to catch than others. Let me first point out the ones you're going to get sick of. You're going to get sick of these guys, the bluegills. The shiners are actually quite valuable. They're worth about 40, 50 quid each, so don't rub catching them. Channel catfish. 
they are in there, <laughs> but I have only ever caught two of them in the lake. They are they are definitely there, um, but I cannot remember what I caught them on, and I cannot tell you for the life of me where to find them because, as I said, I've played this game for two months once solid, and I just couldn't find them, no matter w what. No, no, not get it. And um, they can be very heavy in this lake. Um, as we can see, you know, if you've had time to read the description, top end size 26 kilos, but they're usually between uh, four and a half to nine kilos. Um, the fish that bring you about a hundred dollars in this lake weigh just over a pound. So a 20 pound catfish is a lot of money on this game if you can find them. Grass pickerel, these are in here. These are very difficult to find in here though. I've caught one. Um, they are definitely in there though. Definitely recommend using the bridge, which I will show you soon. The sunfish are very particular with what they eat, but they are in there, particularly the red ears. Smallmouth buffalo, I've never seen one being caught, and I've never caught one. It's probably because I don't really give the, the baits that they need a good amount of time but they're expensive and it is just a hassle this ladies and gentlemen is what we're going for we are going for the swallower of lures very picky with bait but by god they're not picky with lures the spotted bass is what we're going for anywhere between 60 to 150 quid per fish on average we're talking some serious, we see there, 1.8 to 3 pound, a 3 pound spotted bass really is a treat. And now you can start to see just how impressive a 20 pound catfish in here would be. Uh, white crappies, quite valuable, but um, yeah, they're not hard to find. They're very nice when you find them. Um, but for them, I would definitely recommend marshmallows here out of anything as bait. So what we're going for is we are going for, uh, species-wise, we are going for the bass because that is how we are going to make some easy money at the start of the game for the beginners. Right, so we're back on at long last. And this is it. They've massively improved the frame rate. And as you can see, it's actually not that bad. Graphically, we've got, some, we've got a haze over the water. Not always here. Don't think it's just done that. Um... Also, there's something I want to see if they've changed as well. They did used to have some form of compost heap over here where you could pick up a certain type of bait. And I could be wrong, but I think it's gone. I Yeah, I think they may have... I think they may have just ditched the idea of giving away a free bait. That's a shame. Oh, look at this guy. This guy's just w wheeled in a 1.6 pound bass. It's really not bad. I think the biggest I've caught in here is two pound. I've really not seen another fish like it in this in this uh, lake. Even the catfish I caught was was three four pound. Um, I think because of the money I have, though, we'll definitely go somewhere else and catch a bit more exotic fish. But this is how we start. So you hold down L two, and we cast. By the way, if your casts aren't as far as mine, really don't fret about it. I'm using 200 feet of line on a reel, which is not standard issue. I'm Even though I'm using basic equipment, it's not standard issue. So just don't be... I would say a good starting cast range, uh, the minimum with a, with a spool, because you've got to keep re reeling them in, obviously. The minimum I would go for would... S oh, we're in... Um, but I would say 80 would probably be your minimum, so from about there. They're, they're not all this easy, so we've got something small on the line. And I don't think it's a bass, because it's not tugging back. Oh, no, yeah, it is. It's tugging back. It might be. <laughs> the ending can be a bit funny. Yeah, okay, so we caught a small one. <laughs> but look at that. That's 83, that's 83 um, bucks earned. You know, one fish. So... If in the early games, you know, you're thinking 150 is going to take you a while to save up, just catch a couple of these and trust me, you'll be rolling in the money. And I'm going to keep it. If you want the money, you've got to keep it. Now, this is when another complication can step in. 
The only time you will ever need to release a fish is when you do not have an unlimited license. An unlimited super license as well. There's two type of licenses. You have the restricted license, which basically means um, you can catch, you can fish whenever you want, because it's obviously unlimited if you get it. Well, fuck the unlimited bit, okay? You know you can get them unlimited. Let's let's just let's just avoid it. Let me actually tell you about them, right? The restricted one, you can catch, you can catch fish between certain weights. Anything over it or under it will have to be released, and there'll be a warning saying for you to chance it and um, honestly it's only worth chancing it if the fish are over 500 uh, bucks because that's the fine if you're caught stealing one so say if we were feeling randy on one of those passes and we caught a fish that was half a pound bigger than the restriction good payout 250 quid you know and that's a nuts fish let's fuck it let's chance it you keep it i would say there's about a 90 percent chance that they're going to catch you out. I've only gotten away with it once, um, and I've never bothered with it since because it it cost me quite a lot, and um, I did have to fish a lot to get that money back. This Hayden Price guy's just caught a bluegill, so I think he's on a very similar strategy to me because bluegills do occasionally take these lures. Um, that can be seriously, seriously annoying. Um, but so far we're looking pretty good we're certainly sitting pretty so you've got to keep it moving you've got different techniques think think as a fisherman use your L2 which is basically to strike you can use that to your advantage whilst jigging so rather than just say doing this which looks pretty bad but it is a technique and it would work for certain fish this is my preferred the lift and drop or if you do it a bit quicker you twitch it almost as if it's a fish and twitching and stop and go um uh, stop and go lift and drop for me are the two best techniques you want roughly the lure to be close to the bottom but you don't want it anywhere near scuffing because we're not going for bottom feeders we're going for bass which like to swim about um in the middle of the water don't like to rise don't like to date um go deep these bastards um, so as you can see we've already caught one um, from Stan yeah, there's a way to point it out right this one is slightly better they're not all this easy remember this is just the start that is a much better fish that's 130 right there that is a that is a nice spotted bass uh, also a new feature that I should just show you um, that you never got before if you want, if you're really proud of a of a camera, of a fish you caught, you can take a photo of it. I'm not going to take a photo of this one because uh, it is definitely not the biggest sp uh, spotted bass I've ever caught. But yeah, so there you go. Easy money right off the bat. 200 $200. Easy. So easy. Um, and just you know thinking about where I'm casting because this off this pier is definitely one of the best spots for bass if not the best spot for bass on this map so that's why we're using it so and it's not like it's going to be difficult for you to find it's a small map you can walk around most of the lake I think that bit dead ahead of us uh, oh crap we're in and we're in hard oh boy we're in oh this is I might go to a private server I hate it when people just casually walk in front oh boy we're in this could be good oh 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 no 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 right also when it goes slack like that don't just think that's an advantage because if it goes slack for too long the fish will come off so just got to keep pulling it you see you see the crazy positions fishermen get into you've got to do the same with your character you've got to fight the fish don't just reel it in you've got to fight the fish Right, okay, we're nearly in, it's nearly in, it's nearly in. That is a beautiful fish. That is that is a tenth of a pound off my record. That is a very, very nice fish. And that is 145. That's a lot of money. So as you can see, right, we've been doing this for 10, 15 minutes with the explanation included go to fish keeper to check look at that 
three fish in the keep net, three hundred and fifty eight dollars. And that is your pass covered, that's your bait expenses covered if you want to do bait fishing next. And if you catch a few more, um, I recommend buying a keep net, as I've said, because the bigger keep net you have, the more money you can bring in in one go. It's, it's just common sense. It's like when you play those um, click and play games, you know what I mean? Click and it's like an hour for, for building a storage unit or whatever. Well, like if you're if you're saving up money, that's pretty much what this is treated out as. It's like a vault, a bank, <laughs> uh, and every time you leave uh, a lake, so not every day the day changes. That's what you've got to remember, because it'll get to the point where you'll notice there's an option of release, and because it'll get to the point where if you're fishing for a couple of days at a time, and you are hunting for prize money fish. There is sometimes you're going to have to release the lower value ones to make room for your higher value ones. And that's why I'm saying get a bigger net because that just means you can just carry more in general. Right now I'm at £30 but we are saving up for the £50 net, the £55 net. Because I'm alright for licenses as you can see I've got five unlimited passes, North Carolina, Texas, New York, um... Oh, I've I've got both Texas ones. I didn't know, and I've got the Missouri. Basic is the restricted one, as I was talking about earlier. I don't actually think I went on to talking about the non-restricted pass. Um, but yeah, that's what the advanced one is. The advanced one basically means you can catch whatever the hell you like. It doesn't matter what weight it is, and it doesn't matter how much you take. It's basically what it means. It means just go out and have some fishing. But basic licenses means you have to watch yourself, and right now I have to watch myself in North Carolina. But I don't, I don't go there a lot. Um, too expensive right now, and it, uh, it's just not the type of fishing I enjoy. Because that's the other thing you'll pick up on. There's some types of fishing you just really don't, you just really don't like. And um, for me, it's 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 bait fishing. I've noticed anything where I've had to use minnows or anything like that, even though it can work, it is just, uh, there's such an expensive bait and you can lose it really easily. Like I've lost count how many times I've had the bait taken off me. That can happen by the way. Fish can take your bait and the hook can be fine, but still to lose a bait is a bitch. And with the expensive baits, it hurts. And once you've, and if you've already put five thousand dollars into traveling there, you know, getting scammed out of baits is the last kind of thing you need. But that's kind of the harsh realities of of fishing. <laughs> like I said, it is a simulator. You come out here for the sport. And this isn't just a hit and win game, so you can relax and enjoy some, you know, easy trophies or whatnot. I'm not even sure if you can get trophies on this. I know you can get. Um, Actually, you can get trophies. What am I talking about? I got one like last night. Yeah, so you can get trophies, but it's not it's not easy trophies. The technique will go in here. For example, I'm now a way to reel in, and I haven't even had a knock, so I'm thinking of changing spot. Oh no! Oh oh oh! What's this? That is a, what I call a suicidal bluegill. I told you these little fuckers eat lure sometimes. Look at the size of the lure compared to its mouth. I mean, what a cheeky bastard. But those fish do actually have a habit of doing that. They do have a habit. So don't be shocked if you reel in a blue girl. The, the game's not screwing with you. It's the fish screwing with you. Right, so as you can see, that was the pier we were just fishing on. You can fish in there. Um... But I'd recommend that for float fishing, not for not for long distance casting. You want open water like this. So we've been going out here into this middle bit. So if we can go to the bank over there, kind of close to that guy, we'll go a little bit further across. Right, so if we aim into here, this could be a potentially good spot for us. Just got to make sure I don't hit the bank with an overcast. 160 is a good cast though. I'm I'm happy with 160s. So it's a good distance for this lake. Of 
Got a lot of factors to my watch out for. Temperature, time, wind speed. Main priority obviously is fishing, but it's just if you want to do it more efficiently and at the same time feel like you're kind of experiencing a challenge, then you've got to consider all those things. You know, treat it like you were actually outside doing it yourself because it really is it is a good game. As you can see, you know, it just oh god, okay. <laughs> This is why other people don't talk a lot during fishing. <laughs> Someone just caught a pike. Oh, I'm I'm gonna let him know how I feel about that. Oh shit! I think I just released that bass. Let me send a message. Oh well. Oh shit. I don't know how to. I'm just going to go pick a roll because if I say pike, he might not know what it means. I call them pikes. It's what normal people call them anyway. It is an American game. If you couldn't tell from uh, the North Carolina, Missouri, and Texas states. <laughs> so I'm give him a nice compliment there. I think after this fish, we're going to try something different. We might introduce you to some, wow, two pound spotted bass. I'm being conned. Mind you, level 36, he's probably tackling, he's probably tackling some heavy tackle. <laughs> no, but he, yeah, nice fish, nice fish indeed. Definitely going to go private after this though. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Right, I think we're looking at another 1.6 pounder. It's fighting like a 1.6. Or maybe a 1.4 actually. Assuming it's a fish. <laughs> oh my god, that put up a pretty good point fight for a 1.2. Boom. Right, okay. One more cast. I know I, it's almost as if I keep saying that, but this game can get addictive even though it looks like you're doing the same thing over and over. I'm always trying slightly different techniques. And right now I'm twitching rather nicely in the middle of the water. There we go. Come on, let's keep it at three. Let's not keep it too. No, I don't want to be lifting dropping. Right, I need more height. There we go. Give it height. And there's the fish. Right in the middle of the water. Just as I said. If anyone has ever played Ark, think of it like that. How the dinosaurs have set behaviors. Fish are no different. They have routines. It's another good fish. Another really good fish. Right. Do I have the gear with me? That's the question. I don't think I do. Well, it looks like we're going to have to back out anyway. But that was pretty good. So you got a little taste of what we can do. Uh, $600, $600 added to my account. Good day fishing. Um... Don't know if I should go back or if I should take you somewhere else for the next experiment. Um, if you've got damage, just repair it because, like I said, that technique, it's like an unlimited money supply. So if you have anything wearing, don't be stingy. Fix it. Don't, don't think on it. Just fix it. Right. 
Okay. We're going to set up. Well, we have two choices. I can either use the Telefloat or the Caesar. What's stronger? I can take three to nine pounds. I can take two to six. I okay. I can take the harder one, so we'll use that. We need to find a line suitable for the reel. Very crucial. Don't underestimate how important the line is. Doesn't matter if it says the line is too strong for the reel. There's a reason it gives you that warning. Right, so there is the reel sorted. Um, for this... I think braid 6 might be a bit strong. I've already had it cut, so it saves me having to cut from a big spool. When you buy a line, you buy in bulk. So it'll come out similar to this total. This total. And that's feet. Feet in line? I think it's feet. Well, whatever the measurement is. You've seen I was casting about 160, so if you're casting, you, you cut off a good 200. Um, the reason I have so many um, little ones is because I didn't realize how it worked. Um, and I made a lot of boo-boos in that mistake. But that that's that's strong line, that stuff. That's a different, that's a different level. Um, I don't really know what size of hook I should be going for here. I believe the way it works is the bigger the number, the the bigger the hook. Uh, I wouldn't hold me to that though. Because I am not a hundred percent sure. I'll just double check that actually so I don't look like an idiot. Oh sorry, it was the smaller numbers the bigger hooks. Um Well, You know what? I I want to try them. Why why is it not stacking them in my main inventory? Ah, wrong rod. Uh Yeah, okay, let's move some stuff. All the controls are at the bottom. It, again, not complicated. Right, we'll take them with us. Next important step, float. We're going to be using, again, kind of small fish. So I'll need that if it would let me take it. I don't I don't know why I've got that pear-shaped float because, uh, honestly, they that was such a waste of money. Um, I'm I'm gonna experiment with some bait because you know you guys said before when I was talking about doing this that you would prefer to see it done that way. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it that way. Oh Christ. I kind of need, I uh, kind of need them to be there. So why, why is it not coming up on my bait? Hmm. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this template. This is a new feature that I like that I would keep. So there's my telescopic present, and I've got my spinning present. Right. I think even though we've got that on, I think we're definitely going to give maybe that a go. Mm, actually, I'm having second thoughts. 
I just want to. I just want to show you the difference. And I'm worried if I put it on something boring, we're just not going to catch anything. So uh, I've got to go for something I know these creatures eat, even if they're shit. Um, I oh, screw it. It's our last thing of worms. Let's just chuck them out there. Right. I'm carrying two rods of choice. So, we're going to just go back to the Lone Star. And do you think this, and don't think this is boring. If you already think this is boring, by the way, I don't think this game is for you. Because, as I said, you're going to have to keep coming back here if you want easy money. If you think you just need to save up, you'll get better stuff to catch better fish here. But you, you've still got to do it. Because that's just the way it is. Unless you are a master fisherman who can do it, you know, in one day. Get what he needs and then be fine with it. But not a lot of people can. So I, I wouldn't think that you could. That's for damn sure. <laughs> so, again, we've been lucky. It's going to be a good day's fishing. Uh, this time we're going to go private, I'm pretty sure I said, so we weren't disturbed. Um, come on. This can get a bit annoying sometimes. Just do it. Just do what you're supposed to do, please. Just do it. There we go. Private room. We'll make it friends. In case anyone decides to join. Uh, go fishing. Go fishing. Right, we're ready. Just for fun and seeing as it's full fishing, I'm going to cast it into... Uh, what do you call it? I'm going to coast it into the other side of the this side this time we're going to fish this side into this little hovel which doesn't go on and on it literally ends where the fog is still don't understand why it's foggy right so this is going to be interesting i haven't fished with red worms in here before we we'll hope ho hook two isn't too big either so this is float fishing as you can see very different straight off the bat and it's not a matter of watching that on the water it's a matter about watching the float underneath the bait symbol in the top right corner that is everything to go on there we go here we go here we go it's a tension you've got to be very careful you've got to wait till they bite and trust me you'll know when it bites it's still playing with it I'll point out when you can tell it's a clear bite or when you should strike at least. Come on, let's give it a bit of wobble back. Where is it? Because whatever was interested is now no longer there. Ooh, was it, or is that was was that me moving? Nope. Come on, come on. It's something small. If it keeps nibbling at it, it's something small. It's probably a pumpkin seed or something. <laughs> Yes, that is the name of a fish. Something under there likes the bread worm, but is refusing to eat it. And by the way, before you think the movement is me, watch this. Right? See? I didn't strike, I just dragged it, because if you drag it, the float will still go wherever you go. Whatever's under there really likes those worms, but just... Ugh. You know what I think it is? I think they're, t they're just too small for the hook. So, 
Might have might have made a mistake with buying the number twos. <laughs> no, no matter. Right. <laughs> of course. Okay. Okay. I kind of fucked this up. Right. Bear with me. I fucked up. I th I had an idea of what I was going to do in my head, but I completely forgot to do it. What I was going to do is, rather than leave the sixes at home, I was going to swap them with my tens. Uh, okay. Right. Tens are gone. Eights are gone. And we know that we can get sixes to work so I want to take sixes <sighs> hooks I'm actually had a look at it costly hooks to be completely honest it never occurred to me catfish hooks how do you get catfish hooks octopus all right okay, okay. I'm confused <laughs> well do I take fours yeah, yes so Uh, it's being so awkward now. Right, that's better. That's still unacceptable. <laughs> uh, right, we're going to stick a four on this time. Now we're ready. So we've got a size 4 hook with red worm, with the same float, same line, same reel. And I've, the line is powerful enough to take heavier bait, and now we've got a heavy float with us. Right, I finally sorted it out. It's a bit of a... made a bit of a mess of that. Nevertheless, right, let's get back on track. So, I was in... The, uh, friends only room on the bridge and we seen there was something interested in the red worm in the spot I had picked once again though it means we're going to be starting at 5am which is a bit of a bastard but hey oh it's, I was asked by a friend if I could accelerate time on this and the answer is yes. If you are sick of waiting for the peak, you can skip it just to the peak, but just remember you are wasting a lot of time by doing that. You are missing a lot of potential fishing time. Because the fish don't just disappear, they're still there. They're not strictly to a routine or a program like the game suggests. It is a simulator. So they are random. Um, there's just there's guidelines if that makes sense um, but if you skip to the prime times yes you'll catch more fish but I think if I was to play a whole day without any simulation I think I would end the day with the most fish right okay another nudge so it's still here whatever sits on this side of the pier It could be a pumpkin seed, it could be a bluegill, it could be a sunfish, it could be a crappy. It likes to tug at the worms, that's what I'm noticing. And it's not the worms moving. There we go, that's a, that's a strike, that's a take. And that is a blacktail shiner. 
not the most impressive one as I said you can get some up to 50 and, and it's more the golden ones but here's a black tail 21 there you go 21 just for using <laughs> a red worm so well we've used our red worm so that's okay and before you think you have to back out to do everything you don't it's just certain things you have to back out of the game to deal with no, depending on where you are because it changes the variety you go on baits it doesn't just give you a list of baits it shows you the baits you can buy here as you can see bread red worms and that's it and the lures uh, I mean there's a couple of things like the like the spool but <laughs> so bread is basically the only thing you can buy here right and I tell you what, how about just as an experiment for you level 1s, how about we just show you, it's not too demeaning to use this stuff, okay? It can be fun. Let's check out some bread on a hook 4. So, we're looking for a particularly greedy small fish, is what we're looking for. That's basically what your bread's going to catch, but sometimes you'll be shocked. Here we go, already, straight away. We're in, and we have brought in a little bit tiny bluegill and uh, if you want to say a comparison of just how tiny this thing is let's take a selfie so even though I said that's one of my bigger hooks that's still the size of the hook you know we're not exactly in in uh, monster hook territory no <laughs> this is really really good stuff though it's really good to see <sighs> I'm happy that um I'm happy that the game's expanded. Oh, there was a fish jumping over there. And I was nowhere near it. Other downside of float fishing. On certain rods, you can float fish from a distance. But I don't recommend it. Float fishing's much easier when it's up close. You can just bring them in nice and easy. Because if, in my opinion, if you want to just catch big fish, then you're best off spinning and occasionally using live bait. But if you're if you're just wanting to catch a shit ton of small things, you know, get used to catching, get used to basic dynamics of fishing, then float fishing is the way to go because you learn how to instinctively, you know, strike when you need to like that. And you know, it's only a couple of yards away, so it's not really a fight to uh, reel them in. And here we have a white crappie looks more yellow maybe from this angle it's being a pain so we're gonna flop it about a bit and then we're gonna put it in the keep net <laughs> so bread and red worm the baits available at the start has caught me three fish in a matter of moments and has given me 53 quid now so that's three bits of bait Three bits of bait. When fifty of it costs fifteen profit instant. So if you are in the worst, and I mean you are in the worst financial trouble on the game, like to the point where you have absolutely nothing, you have less than a hundred dollars in your bank account or whatever. Stick on the cheap baits and trust yourself. Because trust me, there's no way no one can aff cannot afford bread. I don't think you can be physically put into that position. And you shouldn't allow yourself to be put in that position. I'm sure if you tried very hard, you could. But I wouldn't. Because <laughs> it'd be... I, I, do know, I don't know what you do at that point. But like I said, that is practically impossible. Um, because this stuff is so cheap you know 50 so say you catch a fish at say 9 each you know that's 450 as you've seen some of them are 20 20 times 50 it's a thousand you know and that's just for catching sight shiners not that I'm saying you should go out and catch 50 of these little fish because I imagine that would get a bit boring um, so mixing it up is is good so once that's why I also recommend using the lures because if you if you use the lures rather than the bait 
you can catch a bigger fish which will give you more money even quicker you can travel to the next location and keep enjoying the variety if you play this game right you don't need pay to win you just need to think smart and you need to graft like any other game that's only if you want to be like a hugely successful player or if you want to go for the platinum if you're like me and you just enjoy it because it's a bit of fishing um then that's what it is i know i know that kind of sounds funny you know i go through these thousands of different details and say i play it just for fun um but that's just how i work i'm a seriously analytical person i do formula one videos i'll be doing um some competitive gaming videos soon uh and even though you know i'm i don't come across as the guy who'd usually be into this stuff um particularly fishing uh, <laughs> It's just, um, yeah, I don't really have to think as a competitor. I just have to th think. <laughs> so, yeah, um, for me, that is definitely the most basic of basic techniques to succeeding on this game. Uh, if you're not spinning, then chuck out some bread, you know, because that is just easy profits. Of if I had just bought that bread, I've already tripled my profit, and I've caught three shit fish, and I've got another rod with a lure set on it. So, you know, happy days, happy days. I might struggle with this because I'm currently busy rolling myself a cigarette, so I'll have to strike with one hand. So I'll need thumb on the analog stick, pinky on my R uh, L2, and my finger next to my thumb on my R2. So I'm doing like a metal head clamp on my on my controller, just waiting for it to strike. It's got to do it soon. I could have rolled my fag in this time, but you just never know when it's going to take. So you just it's like fishing. That's all I'm just going to say. If you're in the middle of eating a sandwich and something's fiddling about with the lure, you put down the sandwich. <laughs> it's thumbs up fishing. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Hey, one hand. One hand. That wasn't bad. <laughs> and a gorgeous little bluegill. Now, even though these are annoying, these are pretty fish. And you've got to admire the graphics that they've put into this just for a free simulator. I forgot to mention that if no one already knew. This game is free. So if you're into really fishing and you're thinking, oh man, I don't think that game would be worth 30, 40 quid. Well, don't worry. It is absolutely free. And it's not one of those games where even if you do choose to buy the expansions, you're looking at like a 10 or a pop. I'm pretty sure the cheapest thing you can get is for 79p. And the most expensive, I'm pretty sure, is 15 so if you want to take this game super seriously, spend a lot of money on it, it still won't set you back a fortune. I reckon, to to be honest, if you wanted to buy yourself most of the main good gear in the game, I think you'd still be looking at about half the price of a game, of what we're expected to pay for games now. Um, which kind of sums up the just how crazy, I think, money is getting in the world. You know, they keep saying kids are getting stupider and stupider, but it's at the same time, it's like, well, if things keep going up in price, then what's going to happen? It's probably another Great Depression, right? Oh, anyway, <laughs> move on from uh, to a more joyous topic. So, um, I think that's going to conclude our video for today. Um, I've given you the best tips I can think of um, for making money, for maintaining money. Um, I might make another video soon um, somewhere else because obviously as I said right now I'm saving up for uh, my keep net but I think um, yeah I think we could definitely definitely do another video of this because I certainly enjoyed making it and I know I had at least one person watching at some point so it's not the most unproductive video I've made yet <laughs> um, so yeah, um, leave a like, subscribe, um, if you want to see more of it, because obviously if I don't get any, then what's the point? I mean, I am having fun, but at the same time, what's the point in putting it out there 
if no one's going to see it. I'm not just going to say, oh, well, it's out there, I'm proud of it. No, as I'm out, if it's out there and people tell me it's good, I'll be proud of it, because then I would have done something good in someone else's eyes. That's that's kind of the whole point in, in from my perspective. I'm not really trying to make it as a YouTuber. I'm just kind of get it notice for other things it is youtubing youtube will be a very strong point of what it is i want to do and that's something you will have to find out more about if you know we can get something going here is this the beginning of a fishing revolution probably not <laughs> um but i think it's a really good opportunity for us to um to really expand on this game to to uh, show people that even if you're not really into fishing, it's actually not a bad way to learn how to fish uh, and at least enjoy the simulated experience of being out fishing without having to put up with the with the cold or the wind, which can be a bitch in actual fishing. But obviously, sitting here in your room playing it is absolutely fantastic, <laughs> and I and I do love this game. This game is great. Um, I recommend people play it i recommend if you're a fishing enthusiast you get your butt on it you get it installed uh i don't know what platforms it's accessible on apart from uh ps4 but um it is worth it it is worth the nine gigabyte download it is worth the free price tag <laughs> and it is definitely worth sinking some time into so thank you guys for watching uh been pretty fun see you at the next one